Grade 8 Math, number 6.2b, Graphing Linear Functions. This is the unit about describing functions. So, a function can be linear or nonlinear, and it can be proportional or nonproportional. The relationship we investigated in the previous video, number 6.2a, about heavy snowfall, can be represented by the equation y equals one-third x, where x is the total amount of time and y is the total amount of snow. The graph of the relationship is a line, so the equation is a linear equation. Since there is exactly one value of y for each value of x, the relationship's a function. And it's a linear function because the graph is a non-vertical line. Remember, vertical goes straight up and down. Because this is going on a slant like this, it's non-vertical, so it's a linear function. Remember our vertical line test? We drew a vertical line to see through it, and we don't have points stacked on top of each other. See? Okay, so here's our new one. The temperature at dawn was 20 degrees Fahrenheit and increased steadily 2 degrees Fahrenheit every hour. The equation be y equals 2x plus 20. See? Here's the 2, and here's the 20. And it's going to increase by 2 degrees every x amount of hours. See? So, it shows the temperature y after x hours. Is this relationship between the time and the temperature proportional or non-proportional? Do you remember our video about y-intercept b? All right, let's take a look at this. So the first thing we do is we compare our equation with the general linear equation, that slope-intercept form, okay? That nicely color-coded one I've got here. And we can see that the equation is a linear equation. If it matches up to this, it's a linear equation. And look, everything matches up. See, my colors help, don't they? But this b is not a 0, it's a 20. So because it doesn't equal 0, this relationship is non-proportional. So see, we can just see from an equation that it's linear because it matches the form of a linear equation. And we can see it's non-proportional because the y-intercept b is not a 0, all right? And we choose several values for the input x, and we substitute these values for x in the equation to find the output y. So here's our equation, 2x plus 20, okay? And whatever this is, is going to equal y when we put in a number for x. So if we put in a 0 for that x, it's going to be 2 times 0 plus 20. That'll equal 20. If we put in a 2 for the x, it's going to be 2 times 2 is 4 plus 20. That's a 24. If we put in a 4 for the x, that's 2 times 4 is 8 plus 20. That's a 28, see? And if we put in a 6, that's 2 times 6 plus 20. That's 12 plus 20 or 32. And then if you look, 0, 20, 0, 20. That's our coordinates. That's our ordered pairs. 2, 24, 2, 24. 4, 28, 4, 28. 6, 32, 6, 32. Those are our x and y values for our ordered pairs. We can plot these. When we graph the ordered pairs and draw a line through the points, I don't know if you can see that clearly. I made the line with yellow because I wanted you to be able to see the points. But once graphed, we can see our line doesn't run through the origin 0, 0. See? It's at a 20 on the y. So it's definitely not proportional. And it is a function because it's not a vertical line, is it? There's not points stacked. And we can see our rate of change is the same. So it's linear. See all the things that we can see from equations and tables and graphs? So that's graphing linear functions. And we're going to continue on with this topic. And we're going to talk about how to determine whether a function is linear or not in 6.2c. All right? Don't forget, I'm on Patreon.com. If you'd like to become a monthly supporter, I could really use the help. And I'll see you next video. Bye.